the objectives of VLSI and chip design encompass achieving integration, functionality, performance, area and power efficiency, reliability, yield, design, reusability, and time-to-time -time market considerations. These objectives are pursued to develop advanced electronic devices that meet the demands of various industries and applications. We are so happy to conduct one day FDP on such a topic for all the faculty members of engineering and technology across different countries. Hope this FDP program would provide in-depth exposure in this field. Now I invite our HOD man, Dr. I. Manju, head of the department ECE and IQAC in charge for the welcome address. Please, ma'am. Good morning and warm welcome to Dr. D. Mehanadan, Professor in EC Department, MIT campus, and all the participants on behalf of the management, principal, and faculty of ECE, Mohammed Satak EJ College of Engineering. I thank the management and principal for giving us this opportunity to organize this five day FDP on VLSI and chip design. As we all know, IC design has applications in areas of electrical and electronic appliances, mobile devices, defense, automobile, medical machines, infrastructure, and a variety of other industries. With the, uh, with the introduction of AI and IoT, the complexity of the devices and in turn the VLSI chips has contributed to increase. And the demand for skilled engineers with expertise in VLSI design and verification is growing and it is expected to explode in the near future. The Indian government has also launched a scheme of rupees 76,000 crores to develop the semiconductor and display manufacturing in the country. We, the faculty, play an important role in bridging the gap between the industry needs and the availability of skilled professionals. The five-day FTP is designed to give insight in various stages of IC design, such as design entry, simulation, synthesis, physical design, and verification. The sessions are handled by experts in the industry and academia. I request all the participants to attend the FTP on all the days and get benefited. I once again welcome our expert speaker and all the participants to this five day FDP. Happy learning. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your warm welcome address. I request the speaker to start the session. I take this opportunity to introduce the speaker for day one of FDP. My hearty welcome to Dr. D. Meganathan, working as a professor in the Department of Electronics Engineering, MIT campus, Anna University, Chennai. He received his PhD from Faculty of Information and Communication Engineering, PEG campus, Anna University, 2009, and master's from PhD. Tech 2003. He had collaborate research at KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Sweden. His area of interest includes analog IC design, VLSI design, and network on chip design. He had published more than 50 percent papers in peer reviewed journals. He had chaired many IEEE conferences and senior member of IEEE. Now I invite Dr. D. Meganathan to take over the session. 
Thank you, thank sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So could you see the screen? Can you see the screen? No, sir. Now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You can Fast see the PowerPoint please. slides, right? Yes, sir. OK. So good morning, very good morning to all. So I hope um, most of you taught uh, VLSA design at least once in your career. Um, yes, sir. So today, uh, so I will give the glimpse of uh, MOSFET. Uh, we have many devices, uh, BJT, MOSFET, Jali Masmade, everything. But why we use MOSFET? That is the most important question. Uh, I hope at the end of my presentation, you may know that what is the purpose of using the MOSFET, what is the uh, forthcoming technology, All right? Uh, before starting my presentation, I want to show some one video, okay? Maybe uh, uh, this cartoon was shooted in 1958 in Eastman color. Just to watch that cartoon and observe what are the 1958 shoot, uh, it was shooted. Just to see the cartoon, what are the electronics gadget we have developed now? Yes. Can you see the video? Yes, sir. But uh, not fast, sir. Slowly it will move. Slowly it moves. Yes, sir. Step by step. Is it not synchronous by time, I think so, sir. OK. Normal yes, sir. I will open another play. Now it is okay. It's the same as a slow, slow motion clock. Sir. Slow motion. Yes, sir. The normal, not a video, let's see what's the best step it is. Oh, okay, okay. Hold the main say you have to, VLC is not a good for it, I think so. Sir. Okay, okay. Right, maybe the uh, problem in the network. I can see the videos. Okay, we can see the 1958. The people dream to. Um, can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Uh, the people, the video uh, was shot in 1958 cartoon. Uh, maybe if you watch that video, I'll share with you. Uh, if you're coordinator, you can watch. You can see that. Uh, uh, they dream that to make an electronics gadget such as e-newspaper, laptop, Sigway, and flying car, high-rise building, home automation, robo, etc. Okay, these are the development in the, uh, they predict that this will be the development in the uh, millennium year 2000. Uh, actually, we got many things. The only one thing is uh, they plan that to move the, uh, from Earth to Mars. Actually, we are moving towards that one. But you see that what is the rapid advancement in electronics? 
it is influenced in automobile in electronics automation in industry humanoid robots uh, medical electronics home automation these are the few areas so uh, it has uh, some short short term goals as well as long term goals virtual classroom we are we all experienced in 2020 we all conducted the online classes uh, before that somebody told that we love the online classes that's not possible now you see everyone experienced in teaching online classes and if you see suppose uh, you want to get some certificate from uh, us universities nowadays it is possible of course you can use some sophisticated tool from here to us university once you register some courses for example you want to do some masters in artificial intelligence or data mining or uh, or machine learning those courses you can register from here uh, to the us university like stanford university or university of california berkeley any university learning university you can register and you can do the coursework apart from the online learning you can access that tool also so we are all familiar with the cadence tool i hope the back end tool suppose you suppose your university abroad university is conducting the some courses on analog ic design now here from here from your system you can access their own tool through the cloud okay all these benefits will have the home based health care now you see in india the uh, now what is the age of our uh, uh, average age of our population around 30 maybe the it is a working uh, working age people so india has a more working age people if you shift this paradigm to the next 20 years we will have the more old age population so by planning this one what the many of the universities are doing the research they want to embed the ic on the human body so continuously it will monitor the uh, some vital parameters of the human body suppose there is any action to be initiated suppose if there is any care to be taken that will be uh you are doctor doctor maybe from the remote station will give the instruction to the uh, to the person okay so these are the some of the benefits in the electronics industry virtual classroom home with healthcare work at home industry automation by humanoid robots home automation tele doctors high end smartphone what are the long term goals the long term goal is space shuttle to other planets so what are the changes we can expect very soon we can expect there is no driver in the car bus or train there is no worker in the plant there is no doctor in the hospital because robonet is a humanoid robot which is going to replace the doctor there is no teacher in the classroom even you can see now now itself uh, our ftp is conducted in now, virtual mode only online mode only so there is no spouse at home see in japan the people prefer to have the humanoid spouse rather than the real human pose because it won't ask any question if you go late at your home it won't question you right so but the job is engineers particularly electrical and electronics engineers will continuously work these are the some of the pictures driverless car solar powered car and uh, remote surgery initially what they did is uh, maybe there some expert from the remote class uh, will assist the surgeon in the local to do some surgery later on what they did is uh, they uh, they improved this one such a way that the person from the remote place can access the robo tools to do the surgery so the improvement continues such a way that so what happens instead of the real doctor they feel that we should not be used the uh, virtual doctor that means robot so maybe very soon robots will do the surgery so, so it's like uh, so the whenever we are uh, uh we go to the clinic that our doctor will ask the question such a set of algorithm developed in inside the robo the robo will ask the same set of question and it will prescribe the medicine yes okay. sir sir so, uh, there is some uh, mic will be on for abita begum sir the computer sound is hello abita begum sir yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you thank you sir okay shall i continue yes sir so yes, sir. this is the first computer you all know that the babbage difference in engine 1832 it has 20 25000 parts so another one is the first electronic computer with the size is big room 
So mostly we may not know about this Babbage Analytic Engine. This was constructed in 19, 1854 itself. There was a blueprint, but the British government was not sponsored because that time the cost of manufacturing or producing this computer, this is a mechanical computer, maybe this mechanic to produce this mechanical computer or to construct this mechanical com computer, the cost is equivalent to constructing the two warships. After maybe almost 150 years later, again, the government has taken an initiative to construct the computers. So if you see that computer, it has the same thing in the modern computer. It has a branching, looping, microprogramming, parallel processing, everything it has. But if you see one, uh, around 150 or 150 years back, suppose it uh, came into the picture, then it was the first modern computer. Instead of electronic component, use the mechanical component. So another one is analog system. You can say it is an anti cathode analog system. So in this mechanism used to, uh, this mechanism is used to calculate the movement of stars and planets. So maybe around uh, almost 2000 years back, the uh, Greek people used this mechanism. We can say this is the first analog computer. If you see the history, first vacuum tube, then bipolar junction transistor, then MOSFET. Actually, in this MOSFET inverted in 1920, but though times the fabrication of MOSFET was not easy. That's why initially BJTS ruled the world. Later on, slowly when they made a fabrication of MOSFET is easy, MOSFET started to gain the popularity. Okay, this is the first electronic vacuum tubes. Um, first, uh, the vacuum tubes are these electronic uh, vacuum tubes are used in the World War. Uh, used in the radar system. Okay, earlier they used the mechanical radar system. Later on, uh, during the World War, they invented this uh, electronic vacuum tube. So they started to use this electronic vacuum tube to accurately target the enemy. Okay, so what is the limitation of this vacuum tube? They are large size, they dissipate more power, they have uh, time of it takes a lot of time response is poor and it is a costly one. But even though nowadays in a high voltage DC transmission, US government is using these vacuum tubes. This is the first uh, transistor, BJT transistor, fabricated in 1948. These three people uh, got a Nobel Prize for inventing the transistor, born in William Shockley and Walter Bratton in Bell Laboratory in 1948. Okay. So what are the advantage of this one? Uh, BJT device, it's, uh, its size is very small, weight is very low, and you can automate the fabrication. It can operate the very low voltages, high reliability, because very low voltage means that as uh, voltages at 5 volt, like that only, whereas vacuum tubes voltage, hundreds of voltage, allows the complementary devices. You can have that. Uh, BJT PNP transistor as well as NPN, NPN transistor. Okay, later on what happens is um, uh, six. we have first electronic uh, integrated ICs which use the op amplifier using the six transistor. This is a picture of first integrated circuit. Uh, Widler invented the first op amp, first op amp, then using the six transistor, fabricated in the Fairchild incorporation um foundry in 1964. so when you see the ICs, we have the two types uh, so when a, we can put a question like that uh, it may be bjt or mosfet any other technology so how could you choose the device for example suppose you have some of the tools okay you can you can add a dope and all many things you can suppose you have some of your friends uh, uh, pieces they can add, they can use some tools, they can add, open all those things. They can say, this is the new device I invented. Okay, but the purpose of any invention, it should serve the people, right? For example, let you assume, suppose some of your friend invented new devices. Since we are an electronics engineer, they put a question like this. Okay, can you say, can I use this electronic new device? For example, let you assume it is just like a BJT or MOSFET. Okay, our field effect transistor, any one of the new devices, some of your friend is invented. So you want to make it as a, com you want to commercialize that device. Okay, instead of MOSFET, you want to replace the MOSFET. 
okay so the uh, he is approaching with the device after fabricating the device is giving the device to you so what are the question what are the analysis we will do to check whether the device will be used for commercializing the ic or not sir uh, uh if we if we are using the ic means we have to be in application any device like for the, example any, yes sir Yes, nowadays bridges are uh, designed very, very, very complicated. This is your device. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is your MOSFET. Yes, sir. Okay, somebody has produced some device. For example, let you assume like this, some symbol is there. It has the three terminals yes, X, Z, Y. Okay. Yes, so they are asking can I use this new device to replace MOSFET or BJT? Uh, maybe, no, sir, because uh, heat sink and uh, availability of the IC in a particular application, we should be testing and after testing, it will be a useful one. Because uh, newly one invention, and it spoils the other invention, it is not possible. Right? Okay, what are the applications you check? So you have to cross yes, check, is right? This is a BJT device. Yes, sir. Okay. This is your mass. This is your, yes, uh, some new device. Yes, sir. So you have to cross check whether this device will replace this one. Yes, sir. See, actually, you see, if you take somebody, uh, somebody is giving you a chance to design an analog circuit. This person yes, is better than MOSFET. Yes, sir. Do you know why? What is the reason? Because uh, it is a visual one. I see means it is a complicated fabrication. It's easy fabrication. It's usually visualize the component easily. Of course, you can you can fabricate BJT in IC. Yes, sir. Is it possible to fabricate the BJT no, sir, no, in sir. IC? Sir? No, sir. no, sir. This is not possible. This three. Yes. This three. Okay, your IC uh, seven zero series and gate yes, R gate. What is inside those ICs? It is a transistor. Sir. It is a. Uh, not. We insert the anti gate or gate, yes, sir. Ah, inside the and gate or gate. If you open yeah, switch, and gate switch, or gate, which transistor like that, sir? Loop. Is a transistor or? A... I think so. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't remember it, sir. Okay. Okay. So always it will be a transistor. Okay. Yeah. Yes, right. Sir. So you have the discrete components as well as integrated components. Right, yes, sir. see, you suppose yes, you see the advantage of that we'll check later, we'll discuss. So, now you see, somebody has invented new device, okay. New device, suppose you take your mobile phone, what are the components inside your mobile phone? Uh, uh, processor, memory card, port, okay. Uh, so, the chip, uh, actual chip, so like first, that, uh, first of all, what it has to do, some receiver is power, right? power battery, battery, okay, battery, battery is there. Okay, then only uh, uh, portable device. It will supply yeah. energy to all component your mobile devices. It will receive the signal, is it right? Yes, sir. So this signal, it is very feeble. Strength is very low. What we have, we have yes, to do, it may have the noise also, right? Yes, sir. You Filters. need yeah, some amplifier, amplifier, some filter, is it yes, right? Sir. Yes, then sir. you have some data converter, ADC. Okay, yes, that sir. will convert the thing in uh, analog to digital then you'll have some yes, digital processor okay yes sir then again yes, sir. output of the digital processor will do digital to analog converter then if it yes, is sir. required you amplify the signal it will give to the speaker then only we can uh, converse with your friends this is a off duplex okay so in your speaker you are speaking again it will it will do the reverse process now you see it can apart from that you need a memory also is it right yes sir memory to process memory need. you store something you want to process some information everything you need a memory so a device when you take a device it may be bjt or MOSFET or any device new device is invented the first question we have to put 
can we use that device to construct an amplifier okay or we can put like this can i use to construct that device as analog circuits it may be amplifier yes, or it may be filter or it may be data converter anything another one is can i use to construct this one for digital circuit second question yes, yes. okay suppose i can use the device to construct an analog circuit good suppose i can use to construct a digital circuit very good can i use to construct a memory circuit okay yes sir if it is answer yes yes i can use it to construct a analog circuit yes i can use to construct a digital circuit yes i can use to construct a memory circuit memory. Yes, sir. then you are device that means you invent a new device that is going to rule the world very near future and uh, immediately the foundries will have the agreement with you and you will become a billionaire yes sir right so yes, what sir. is the advantage of this mosfet we'll see actually why analog design so i told you there is three things are important one in electronics one is designing the analog circuit another one is designing a digital circuit third one is designing a memory circuit so what is the purpose of analog why not the digital alone digital it will have a lot of advantages suppose you want to eliminate the noise simply by changing the coefficient you can change the order of the filter and you can easily eliminate those noises but analog it's not like that you have to you have to physically construct the order of the filter in digital just computer program you can do that so analog is a design but actually what is a uh, thing is real world signal all our real world signals are analog signal not a digital signal so for example you are taking the lecture the lecture is the analog signal right it is not a digital signal. you can't speak in one zeros like that your signals are a continuous signal so real world signals are analog signal whereas your digital processor will do only the digital signal so you need a weak signal you want to boost up by using the amplifier avoid some noises then you need a data converter so you have the digital system also so advantage of the digital system is so you see why we use mosfet the so what is the purpose of mosfet why we are using the mosfet rather than the bjt devices or uh, integrated so this is ic okay, integrated you can scale down the most yes. important thing is you can scale down the size of the devices yes, so when you scale down the size of the devices actually you have many many bits when you scale down the size of the devices supply voltage reduces Yes, okay supply voltage reduces when supply voltage reduces dynamic power dissipation reduces cl vd square vdd square f okay yes, your sir. dynamic power dissipation decreases right so your power dissipation decreases when you scale down the sizes area shrinks right and yes, uh, speed is inversely proportional to the length so speed also increases you get all the benefits when you scale down the devices and also memory you can construct a memory and the speed when the speed is high uh, you can increase the uh, memory access and speed also will increase okay so why we use the cmos technology cmos technology uh, dissipates less power maybe the after 90s 70s the fabrication is very easy cost of fabrication is very less scale down the size is possible uh, more suitable for portable and battery operated devices it reaches just a larger amount of customer so you see suppose uh, 20 years back if suppose you have purchased a car okay what is the cost of the car that is as in 5 lakhs yes. okay 20 years back we purchased very good quality of the car the cost of the car is 5 lakhs suppose the same quality is you want to purchase now what may be the cost of the car same quality means uh, same quality but, uh, no. same Yeah. Uh, nowadays uh, you see Adika. 20 years yeah. back uh, uh, they use the most steel material yes, okay nowadays, they are replacing to the fiber right? right so yes, so same quality of the car okay i want a steel everything engine quality everything suppose i want to get a same quality not modernizing we are not talking about the modernizing the engine can you understand yes. maybe the technology yes. is always modernize those things you leave um material wise suppose you want to get the same quality of material what may be the cost of the car will it increase or decrease definitely increasing sir definitely increase because 
your product cost will be the uh, either two cost yes, one is uh, yes, fixed cost another one is operational cost okay yes, so the fixed cost once you commission the factory it is over operational cost it depends the salary of the employee everything material cost everything will yes. increase so product cost will continuously increase same thing you can see suppose 20 years back you bought on laptop with some specification now you are uh, you are purchasing the same laptop with the same specification whether the cost of the laptop will increase or remain same or you will get at the lower price it also increasing sir cost will also increase no sir uh, according to the accessories and features uh, it will be okay. decreasing Actually, but uh, uh, the thing is the uh, uh, specs remain same there is no change in the specs yes, for example yes. 20 years back you purchase a pentium 4 processor and uh, uh, 128 uh, gb memory okay 64 uh, gb ram like that you purchase nowadays suppose you want to purchase the same thing laptop what is the cost low sir it is low yes uh, it will be very low 2000 one yes. of our uh, yes. university professor purchased a laptop at the cost of one lawyer spec okay nowadays yes. if yes. you invent yes. Invest one lakh rupees, you will get a very good specification laptop. Okay, that is a that is a difference between the electronics industry and any other industry. The what is the reason behind this one? See, once you increase the specification, or if you are, uh, if you add the more number of amount of feature, the cost has to increase. But it river it happens reversely in uh, electronics engineering. Why? Because of integration. Because of integration. Because, uh... Uh, it is not integration, it is scaling down the devices. For example, of course, you see, in 1960, we purchased one, uh, this is a device, this is a, let you assume, this is a die size, okay, wafer, we can say wafer. In this wafer, suppose you use the one micron technology, one, one micron square area, one transistor is constructed, let us take a square, okay. Then what happens if you take the 0.5 micron technology, we are not increasing the area, but we can construct a four number of transistors. Can you understand the difference? Yeah. We can accommodate more number of yes, transistors in a same area. So nowadays you see you can construct the billions of transistors in a die. So some group of transistor you can use to construct a digital. Some other group you can construct a analog. Some other group you can construct a memory. So uh, the device strings it has lot of benefits. Okay. So maybe twenty years back, suppose we purchase the mobile phone. What is our objective? Uh, more spaces we need. Uh, 2000, uh, 2000 or, uh, around 2002 and three. Okay. Uh, yes, mobile sir. first arrived in India 1997 itself. Okay. Yes, so now you see, as in around 2002, it becomes slowly it becomes popular. Right. What yes, is sir. the purpose of purchasing those days mobile phone or nowadays mobile phone? Uh, those days button system. Now it okay. is uh, virtual. Okay. And, uh, Those uh, days, we uh, need a PC. PC needed now. Uh, PC, Gmail, all the things are in the purchasing. Okay. okay. All the things are the using. Uh, with, we, have, we have a better friend like mobile phone like that, sir. Okay. Let us system GPR. Maybe, uh, uh, those days we purchase mobile phone for communication only. Is it right? Hundred so, percent yes. communication. Suppose yes. you want to call somebody, you'll make a call. Uh, you'll communicate with him, then you'll close the call. That's all. Finish. Nowadays, it is not only communication, maybe the communication may be 10 to 15 percentage. So your mobile phone is another processor. It has camera. Is that right? Yes, sir. Camera, you can shoot photos and videos, right? Yes, so you will yes, have sir. the social media, so you can connect with the external world. You can download videos, many things you can do. So the communication purpose is only 10 to 15 percentage. So in turn, so you are doing a lot of works, is right, with the, your mobile phone. Your mobile phone is another, uh, just like a laptop, is right? Most of the jobs yes. you are doing. But what is the difference between mobile phone and uh, laptop? So we can easily type the, by typewriting, and okay. uh, switching, keyboard, okay. in, but uh, we are going to, to processor and uh, a printer like that. So, but so as with mobile phone, we are seeing only the, it is not difficult using typing like that, anything input like this. Okay, okay, you know, okay, okay. See your laptop. So, what is inside the laptop? 
same thing in the pc but uh, it is to be integrated so, no, no, micro processor no. power processor oh, okay what are the battery. electronics component inside the laptop yeah electronic components mainly processor suppose i sir. want to learn the ec course yes, okay i want to learn electronics communication engineering completely thoroughly which device i will choose whether laptop or mobile phone it is not a course content can you understand mm. laptop yes, sir. so yes, sir. module based which one you will choose i want uh, to learn mobile. analog component okay mobile you can't see any analog think. component in your laptop you can see memory and processor you can't see amplifier you can't see yes, data sir. converter you can't see filter okay you yes. can't see the adc or dac can you understand yes, you have yes, only sir. digital processor okay yes, this mobile phone you see your mobile phone so you will have the analog component digital component memory component everything is there suppose you want to yes. learn the your ec completely you learn mobile phone okay it will have the yes. um, your supply voltages everything you will have the band gap reference circuit everything inside your mobile phone okay so now yes. the same yes. thing is say you invent a new device that device is very good in designing analog uh, digital circuit okay you, we have invented some new device this device is very good in designing a digital circuit so immediately it goes to the laptop there is no question at all so nowadays your laptops are they are using the 7 nanometer technology okay those technology you can use it for a your laptop all right so whereas yes, suppose you have the analog component also so i have the amplifier i have the filter circuit i have any other circuit i can't use a this digital core suppose this device you are designing the device it is very good in digital design but it is very bad in analog design you can't use this device to construct a mobile okay yes. so we can say the most important point system on chip see here when you take a bjt right so always we can let us assume gain so what is the purpose of using the device as an amplifier this is your device i want to make it as an amplifier what is the purpose weak signal you have to amplify the weak signal why you have to amplify weak the weak signal why do you want to amplify weak the weak signal uh, see for example yes, sir, assume you have a public addressing system in your public yes, addressing system you have the speaker is it right yes sir okay the, what is the job of the speaker uh, whatever the the, uh, the spoken spoken by the speaker it will be reaching to the audience okay. So it will change uh, speech signal into first of all it will change it will convert it has a transducer it will convert speech signal into electrical voltages okay okay yes, so this voltage is continuous voltages yes it's like this continuous signal okay this continuous signal the magnitude of this continuous signal is very weak yes, okay maybe the Few hundred microvolt only. It can't okay. drive the loudspeaker. So loudspeaker need a lot of amount of power. It can't drive it. So first of all, what you need is first of all you have to boost up this signal from small signal my uh, microvolt to millivolt into volt. Okay, that is a we can say signal amplifier. If you say the signal amplifier, then you have the power amplifier which will drive this load. Load means your speaker. So now you see when you take a mobile phone. Suppose you assume you have big, uh, so you can construct analog digital component either using the discrete component or IC. Can you understand? Analog amplifier yes, in BJT you can construct as a discrete component or IC. Okay, the advantage of this one, what do you see? If you open your mobile phone, same. If you open your mobile phone, let us assume this is your mobile phone. I open this mobile phone. It has the uh, rows of transistors, right? Let us assume there is a some trans. This is a niche and every row. There are many transistors are there. So the objective is so let me take the some hundreds of transistors to construct your amplifier, um, RF front end, and your uh, data converter, everything. Okay. So low noise amplifier, everything you can construct by using the inductor capacity, everything. So now you see some other portion or some of the transistors I can use to construct a digital portion. Some of the some of the transistor I can group and construct a memory portion. 
that is called system on chip in a given ic see in a core almost 20 you can say 20 percent in analog and 80 percent digital components are there but you see designing the 20 percent analog it takes 80 percentage of design time designing 80 percent of digital it takes only 20 percentage of the digital time we'll see why what is the reason okay so here you see the technology maybe the uh, we, we have to see look at this one 80s we use the one micron technology supply voltage is 5 90s we go down what happens um, your technology decreases uh, 50, uh, 500 nanometer technology or 350 nanometer technology 250 nanometer technology 180 nanometer technology you see the supply voltage supply voltage also decreases if you come down further from 135 nanometer to 22 nanometer technology so what happens is the supply voltage remains the same you know what is the reason minimum voltage needed for your circuit to operate ah, minimum voltage required to switch on the device okay on, yes, sir, the threshold on. voltage so the threshold voltage depends the physical component we are adding to the device okay yes, there is doping concentration etc etc so we can't scale down the supply voltage less than one volt right and yes. also when you bring this transistor very closer you see this is your transistor uh, you have the source and drain end drain and source and this is your gate okay this is the length of the device okay if you close you bring the transistor very close what happens uh, now the length effective length decrease so for example let you assume this is a 180 nanometer this is 22 nanometer what happens the gate will control the device is it right the gate, yes, gate signal will control the device if you don't give any gate signal the device should be off condition if you give the gate yes, signal sir. and there is a voltage between drain and so then there should be a conduction is that right that is a basic principle if the gate is uh, see if there is no gate signal you are giving the voltage across the drain and source alone so what happens in a sub micro ultra sub micron technology the device start to conduct okay you are okay. device start to conduct so these are the there are many second order effects this is one of the second one of the second order effect we want to avoid this one so what happens actually so you want to see, so that's why you see suppose somebody has given you a chance can you choose 135 nanometer or 32 nanometer it is better to choose the 135 nanometer because you have to face lot of second order effects when you go down the lower technology so what happens slowly people realize that so this technology is not suitable mass technology is not suitable we have to go some other technology we have to move on to the some other technology if you open nowadays if you open your laptop you can see only the finpet technology there is no mass technology so most i think all of you heard about the moose law is it right yes sir so what is moose law can you state can you remember ori milela sat the memory element it should be i think so sir memory element memory element for a repeated transition for digital circuit Moose law. Like this, Moose law. See, every 18 to 24 months, the number of transistors in a die will be doubled. Yes, sir. How it is possible? Only scaling down the technology. See, you have to yes, reduce sir. the size. When you reduce the size, you can double the number of transistors. So nowadays, see, uh, almost Intel uh, going down. They want to scale down the technology because everyone wants to follow the most law. Okay, so 2023 i9 processor, 13th generation, 6 gigahertz speed, 24 24 cores, 7 nanometer. They are using the 7 nanometer input technology. So what will happen next? See, there are two person. One is uh, Intel. Intel want to increase the number of transistor in a given die. So what happens? What they are doing is they're taking the number of tiles cores 2010 itself they constructed a 80 tile processor okay so ibm so actually ibm want to do that this is a intel 80 tile processor 80 tile processor okay so ibm yes, want to stack the vertically right so there is a so the problem is a three dimensional signal integrity vertical we have to transmit the signal from vertical stacks they construct the many things in a parallel this is a one core core one core two like that is there each and everything will be communicate each other 
okay so yes. so what happens actually all of them want to satisfy the moose law right what is the moose law once in Every... a few years you want to double the number of transistor but it is a it is a mad race it is a mad race really it is a mad race you see you are operating the computer unless you run your uh, run cad and stool in your computer if you are doing the powerpoint presentation all those thing it doesn't require a sophisticated computer okay because your keying speed or your operating speed always less than uh, gigahertz okay we'll operate the computer in milliseconds so suppose you are uh, you are preparing the powerpoint presentation it is not required a high end computers okay suppose you are running some uh, tools sophisticated tools it requires a high end computers okay so now you see what they uh, thought why should not we move to the some other technology okay why should we stuck up with the mass why should not we migrate from mass fed to some other technology if you see stanford university they are doing the research on carbon nanotube university of california they are doing the research on finfed technology okay penn state university they are doing the research on tfed university of notre dame they are doing the research on quantum cellular automata right yes sir so what is the objective mass reached the saturation point you can't scale down it has lot of second order effects so it reached the saturation point every product will have the like a inverted bath tub curve okay product cycle so it will increase it will reach the saturation then it will decline every product will have that cycle So now mass reached the saturation. Okay, mass fed reached the saturation. Uh, most of the researchers are looking for the alternative. These are the fuels. Okay, so the US they are doing research on finfed technology, carbon nanotube. They are, of course recently they released the carbon nanotube uh, based uh, electronic circuit, tfed technology, quantum cellular automata. Here also molecular quantum cellular automata. They released the ICs. okay so what is the, so you see what is the limitation of these technologies so lead is gallium arsenic technology gallium arsenic technology now fabrication is very difficult all the technology quantum cellular also fabrication is difficult lead is to as of now you see uh, it is possible to fabricate the finfet ics carbon nanotube ics and tfet ics they are fabricating as of now they are fabricating these ics But if they fail somewhere, where they fail, can you guess? Uh, yes, sir. This is sir. They are using a separate area for uh, like that. They are using. Okay, they are using to... separate area. For example, a mobile phone, you have to use separate yes, area. Okay. Yes, And then why uh, they are manipulate... using separate area? Why it is not like a mass? Yes, sir. But uh, under manufacturing, sir, we should be having a pore on our health. it will be affect our uh, no 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 radiation like that. if you take your laptop complete the yes, complete sir. the processor is replaced by finfet yes sir oh, okay sir. completely complete the processor, processor is... is replaced by a finfet technology finfet. okay yes, advance if you recently if you go and purchase your laptop nowadays you'll get only for finfet technology okay sir okay uh, can you any yes sir Sir, before the technology, we have one volt uh, problem like that, sir. Well, all of the have same nanometer. So this is simple, but one technology can you say 0.5 volt? 0.5 so you are scaling down okay. the technology supply voltage, so power dissipation yes. decrease. We will have yes, the sir. advantages, and speed of the finfet devices uh, is uh, uh, faster than your mass devices. If you take carbon nanotube, also it is faster yes, than sir. the mass fed. Tfet also it is faster than the mass fed. Okay, superior than the mass. Yes, sir. But speed, uh, area. But analog signal is same, same only. Yeah, analog the problem with this technology one. is the problem with this technology is you can't construct the analog device using finfet. You can't construct yes. the analog with carbon nanotube. You can't construct the analog circuit using tfet. You can't construct the analog circuit using quantum cellular automata. They are all very good in digital domain, not good yes, in sir. analog domain. that's why yes, till now your mass is surviving okay you are why the your mass fed is surviving now if you open your mobile phone you can see only the mass fed so the reason is your mass fed is surviving because you can't construct the analog circuit using the 
any other MOSFET. technology as of now. It's only MOSFET yes. by using MOSFET you can construct an analog circuit, digital circuit, as well as memory circuit. That is the reason. So as of now, MOSFET is a boss. So it is used to construct a digital circuit. It is used to construct an analog circuit. It is used to construct a memory circuit. So, so let us take the let us so let us discuss the some uh, basics of MOSFET. So, when you take the MOSFET current equation, how can you define the mass current? Mass current is sir. Yeah, current flow of the MOSFET. Uh, suppose we give you one volt point five volt means it will be enabled for a drain gate. Uh, okay, gate okay. should be operated. Principle of MOSFET. How it works. Uh, then MOS will be MOS, MOS the low frequency, yes, uh, remember, sir. see the current flows of the MOSFET, it is an interaction of two electric field. One is yes, created sir. between drain and source, another one is created yes, between gate and source. Understand? Yes, and yes, you sir. have the set of current equation. You see that there are three operating region, cutoff region, Saturation region, linear region. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Maybe 1970 mass was invented. In that time if you use this equation, they are the valid equation. Nowadays, these equations are not valid. Yes, sir. Do you know why? So so many silicon silicon in the same hospital. Let us assume. Uh, maybe 60, 10 micron technology use. Okay, yes, we are using the 22 nanometer technology. The same, this current equation valid in 10 micron technology, but they are not valid in 22 nanometer technology. Do you know what is the reason? I think so. There is a saturation region. After that, there is any difficulties in uh, maintaining the saturation day like that, sir. Operating. So it is not a saturation region. Uh, so I have no actually idea. Actually, there are many second-order effects are introduced. Okay, yes, I put here some set of current equations, uh, N-mass device and P-mass device. They are the complement in nature. Okay, so yes, let us take some of the uh, some of the component of your MOSFET. The most important thing is threshold voltage. Okay. So how can you define the threshold voltage based on this equation? This is a basic equation to define the threshold voltage. So this is a pi ms. So what is a pi ms? It is a work function difference between uh, metal and semiconductor. Normally, metal uh, energy level will be higher than the semiconductor. So you have to give the energy negative level. So actually, if you are raising the energy due to the positive level, here you are giving the negative energy. Okay. To down the metal energy level to Fermi level to equivalent to silicon level. That is called pi ms. It is always negative. Work function difference between metal and semiconductor, it is negative. Then next one is charge stored across the channel. This is your MOSFET. So this is your channel. Across the channel, charge will be stored. Okay. That is called QD. QD is based on this equation. QD is based on this equation. Then the energy required to overcome the silicon silicon dioxide. This is your silicon, this is your silicon dioxide. So there is a once again you have to give the negative energy to balance the Fermi level of silicon and silicon dioxide. So QA also negative. So this is a, next one is a pi F. We can say surface energy. It is an energy required to bring the electrons from valence band to conduction band. So you'll have the this is a Fermi level, this is a conduction band. This is a valence band. So you have, it requires the energy from valence band to Fermi level, Fermi level to conduction. That is called pi F. Okay, if you take the equation, what happens actually? Pi M S is negative. Q D is positive for a N channel device. Q A is negative. Pi F is positive. Okay, negative, yes. positive, pos negative, positive. This is the resultant value. This is the resultant value. Positive minus negative, positive. Positive plus positive minus negative. So what happens for n mass device? You will get a threshold voltage as a positive value. Understand? Okay. First one yes, is sir. negative. The resultant of the second one is positive. Third one is positive. If you if you sum it, what you will get there? 
if for n mass device this threshold voltage will be positive for a p mass device pi ms is negative charge stored across the device also negative the second one also negative q a is also negative pi f is negative okay so what happens actually pi ms negative q d by c o a second time also negative pi f also negative so what happens the result will be negative that's why p mass device you will get a negative threshold voltage and n mass device will have a positive threshold voltage okay yes, again it seems it it depends that this threshold voltage depends the substrate effect also see for example some of the few uh, few second order effects i have listed here so one is threshold voltage modification due to substrate effect channel length modulation effect sub threshold conduction and velocity saturation see look at this one see here what is your threshold voltage threshold voltage for by formula pi ms plus qd minus qi by cox plus 2 pi f this is the equation is it right okay let yes. me give some number 0.3 volt like that okay let let me assume this is a n mass devices okay so you you know that how to construct a digital circuit is it right yes sir whether mass is a four terminal device or three terminal device three only three three only but actually mass is a four terminal device okay so to use it sir source drain gate okay. and you'll have okay. a substrate substrate is a substrate okay yes, substrate sir. you can give the symbol of b b gate source drain this is a p mass for n mass once again drain source gate substrate okay. yes, drain gate source and substrate right so normally what we will do is we connect substrate with the source always we connect substrate with the source substrate with the source substrate with the source okay when you take a mass with a mass right what are the region yes. it will operate three region cut off region cut off region means switch is open is it right yes sir this, yes, sir. this is a mechanical switch if you i can replace this mechanical switch by a active switch mass i can say it is a active switch so when the device is off condition that means cut off means the switch is open what is the resistance offered by this device now the switch is open means directly the whatever you have given the input it be huh? grounded sir should be grounded na what is the resistance offered by the switch when the switch is open no sir it doesn't put it in the resistance sir it mm -hmm. is open no resistance Okay. So See, let, you, uh, let, me, let me put the question like that. You are the multimeter. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't uh, don't connect across any resistor or don't short it. What is the resistance it will show? Yes. Hmm? Our body. Don't touch the terminal. Okay. No, sir. It will be zero zero. If you touch it, it will it show shows. zero. If you touch the probe. Otherwise, uh, Then only yes, it will show zero. If we don't yes, touch sir. it, what it will show? Yeah, some random values like. Is it random value? Minimum. See, this is your zero. Out. Yes, sir. Okay, your multimeter. Suppose yes, this sir. is your zero. Here yes, some sir. infinity is there. Where your pointer yes, will be located? If we don't touch the probe, probe needle. If you don't touch it, your probe is like this, parallel. Okay. Yes, sir. So then, what is the value it will show? No, no value to show. Sir. No value. Or we can say it is a warp. It means it will show infinite as a value. Is it right? Yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is. See, if we take a mechanical switch, so maybe yes, let you. Uh, buy one electric switch yes, from sir. the shop, electrical shop. You measure the resistance shown by this electric switch. What is the resistance to show when the switch is open? Uh, the normal wire to resistance, sir. It should be. What is the normal resistance when the switch is open? There is no connection. There is no connection. Switch is open. 
So when the switch is open yes, means infinite. Infinite. Okay. Yes, when sir. the infinite. switch is closed means it is zero ohms. It will show. Yes, okay. Sir. So what is the importance of this active device? This is a mechanical device. Mechanical device you have only two operations. One is on your resistance is zero. Yes. Okay. One is off your resistance is infinity. Okay. okay. That is called okay. passive switch. This is active switch. Yes, sir. This active yes, sir. switch. You can operate the device in a various operating region. Okay, why it is called yes, active? Active means uh, it shows the zero or one. It should be a normal switch like that. It is not zero and one. You see, actually, you see, um, for example, you take a resistor. Yes. You take a resistor, right? Okay, connect your one volt. Assume one ampere, one milliampere. One microampere current flows. Okay. Yes. One microampere current. Now you make it as 1.2 volt. What is the current will flow? Same, same, same. 1.2 will be of course. 1.2 will be? Flow into the resistance before resistance. Because we are giving the supply voltage 1.2. See, let you assume. 1 mega ohm resistance. Suppose you want, I will give the value of the resistance also. 1 volt, yes, 1 volt divided by 1 mega ohms. What is the current flows? 1 microampere. Is that right? Volt by resistance yes, is sir. the current. Now, yes, I if increase yes, the voltage to 1.2 volt, what is the current will flow? Resistance, there is no change in the resistance. Same resistance. Same what resistance, is the current yes, will flow? One volt, yeah. one point minimum volt. Huh? decreasing, sir. decreasing in the current. Yeah. Current will decrease or increase? One point two uh, volt divided by one micro. One point two microampere current will flow. Microampere, sir. Understand? One point two divided by one mega ohms. One point two microampere will flow. So current, you see, voltage equal to I into R. Is that right? This relation always yes, remains as constant. Okay, if you take the capacitor, what is the voltage, what is the current flows through the capacitor? C into del V or change in the voltage with respect to time. Right? Yes, sir. Similarly, what is the voltage induced across the inductor? L into di by dt. Yes, Always sir. this remains the same. Let me say, yes, sir. voltage across the capacitor will be current into x. Current into x. Voltage across the voltage across the inductor is L in T X. Current across the capacitor is C in T X. Understand? C yes, in, sorry. This I can say R in T X. R in T X. If I increase, what is the X here for resistor? X is the current. If I increase current. the current, voltage will increase. If I decrease yes. the current, voltage will decrease. Is that right? Yes. Similarly. Yes, Current flows through the capacitor C in dx. What is x? Change in voltage with respect to time. If I increase this x, I will increase. If I decrease this x, I will decrease. Similarly, for induction L into dA by dt, if I increase this x, V will be increased. If I decrease this x, V will be decreased. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. So, yes, sir. Say, all these things it obeys. There is a linearity. Okay. If you increase x, the same amount left hand side will also increase. If you decrease right hand side, the same amount left hand side also will decrease. This linearly proportional. Understand? Yes. Yes, Whereas your MOSFET or active devices, you can say those devices are non-linear devices. Your active devices are called non-linear non devices. Why it is called non-linear devices? It doesn't support this uh, linear. Doesn't support it this linear. It. For example, let us take a MOSFET, this is your MOSFET. Okay, it has some threshold voltage also, is it right? For example, let us give you some number. 0.8 volt is the threshold voltage. When your input voltage, yes. this is your input voltage, input is less than 0.8 volt. Less than 0.8 volt. How the MOSFET will be? So you, you have your connection, you have the drain and source, your variable supply. Okay, here you have the variable supply, gate source. Your input is less than 0.8 volt. How the MOSFET will be? 
Yes, there's no response till it reaches the input will reaches the yeah, so 0.8 yeah uh, 0.8 volt so we can say it is in a cutoff region no current will flow it is in the cutoff region no current will flow okay yes, so for example yes, let you assume your input voltage increase beyond 0.8 okay then what is the current will flow what is the current so i'll show the current equation now you assume your input is greater than 0.8 volt what is the current flow here no current yes sir masfed no current flows now input is yes, greater sir. than vtn what is the current flow what is the amount of current will flow it should be uh, above zero sir uh, it is above zero, zero but it depends the which region it operates now whether it operates linear uh, region or saturation if it operates no, in a linear, linear region, region sir it operates in a linear, linear region that we don't know so unless you check this condition you can't say whether it is operating in linear region or saturation region in case it operates in a linear region this is the current equation governed by this equation it is operating in a saturation region it is a current equation can you understand that's yes, why sir. every region you see yes. if, you, if you see the mass characteristic curve this is a MOSFET characteristic curve you see the MOSFET characteristic curve this is this region your current equation is entirely different from this region current equation they are not uniform they are not uniform understand they are non-uniform that's why you can say active devices have non-linear devices so your mosfet is a non-linear devices right you want to do the yes. some analysis you want to make it as a piecewise linear equation you take the small portion the small portion alone to do the analysis then this small portion is a linear. So we can say it is a piecewise linear issue. Okay. So now you see yes. this threshold voltage. If you take the threshold voltage, um, this is your MOSFET. I hope you all of you know how to construct a digital circuit using. CMOS technology A B C. You'll see what is the why we are using the CMOS technology. A B C. Okay. As I told you, this is the four terminal devices. I connect substrate with source, substrate with source, substrate with source, substrate with source, substrate with source. When mass is operating in a cutoff region. Infinite is a resistance. When mass in uh, mass is operating in a linear region, it offers some resistance. That resistance we can say R on. When mass is operating in a saturation region, once again it will it offers some resistance. Again, we can say R on. This R on is entirely different from this R on. The value will change. Understand? That depends the yes, operating sir. region. Now we see I connected all source with the substrate. Okay. Ma? I connected all source with the substrate, right? So you see what is a source substrate voltage? This is a three input NAND gate, three input NAND gate. Okay. So what is the source? Let us assume A B C R zero zero zero. Okay. A B C R zero zero zero. Okay. So I can give the yes, number one two three. Four, five, six. Which devices are switched on? Which devices are off condition? A, B, C is in the off condition, sir. But uh, A, B, C are off. A, B, C are yes, EMAS devices. They are all devices, on. Sir. On is sir. One, two, three are on. Devices one, four, two, three. Are. A, B, C are on. the input signals. One, two, yes, three are the PMAS devices. A, B, A and A are connected. B and B are connected. C and C are connected. Understand? Yes, that is an input signal. 1, 2, 3 will be on 4, 5, 6. Sir, 4, 5, 6. Off. 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 Now you A, B, C are 1, 1, 1. How many devices are on? on? How many devices are off? What are the devices the are off? What are the devices are off? Sir, if you have a flow in A, B, C means uh, sir, definitely uh, there is a possibility for 4, 5, 6 also on. Both one, two, three, four, five, six, sir. Huh? 
One, two, three will be on uh, off condition, sir. Okay, one, two, three yes, are off condition. Four, five, six are on condition. Yes, sir. Right. So now yes, let sir. me look this one. This person, all these people are connected to uh, substrate uh, source. Uh, so not source. Um, see the PMAS substrate should be connected to VDD. So these are things are connected to VDD. NMAS substrate should be connected to ground. Okay, and my substrate would be connected to ground. Let me draw this four, five, six separately. This is ground. This is ground. This point is ground. Okay, this is a substrate. B, this is source. B, source. B, source. So, what is the potential difference between? Substrate and source in device 6, device 5, device 4. The device is on. Okay, now yes, the sir. device is on. What is the potential difference between source and substrate in device 3? Once again, draw. This is source. Yes, sir. This is source. This is source. Yes, Let me say yes, S4, yes, S5, S6. Yes, sir. This is substrate B4. B4 is connected to ground. Okay, wow. Yes, sir. B5 is connected to ground. B6 is connected to ground. Okay, wow. just I replace this mass by a resistance. It's on time resistance. Understand? When the device is on, it offers some resistance. That resistance I think. Yes, sir. Then uh, 3 into the so three, it will be added. See what is this uh, potential? Here, here you look at this one. 1, 2, 3. When device 1, 2, 3 are switched on, for one substrate as well as source is connected to VDD. Okay. Yes, sir. Two yes, sir. also substrate. Always PMA substrate should be connected to VDD. Yes, sir. Okay. Wow. This also VDD, yes, source also VDD. This device also source yes. also VDD, substrate also VDD. This also source also VDD, separate uh, substrate also VDD. No change in the, there is no potential difference between source and substrate. Because here 0.8 volt, here also 0.8 volt. What is the difference, potential difference? Only zero. Okay. Yes, sir. No difference. Well, let's look at this one. Let us take the this device alone. This device, substrate is connected to ground, source also connected to ground. What is the VSP? What is the potential difference between source and substrate? The VDD will be flow on the three circuits, sir. Okay, four, current five, will six, flow. I think. The See, current the will flow. Is, all... Source okay. is connected to ground. Substrate also yeah. connected to ground. If you use the multimeter, what is the uh, voltage you will measure here? Uh, resistance for uh, oh, yeah. eight point eight uh, means uh, uh, all the things have the same. No, no. Uh, decreasing Here, service, look decreasing. at only this device. Only six, not five and four. Only six. Look at this one. Substrate also connected ground. Source also connected ground. If you use the multimeter, what it what is the value it will show? This one zero volt. This one also zero volt. If you use multimeter, what is the value it will show? Infinity, sir. Infinita. Uh, zero zero only, sir. Ah, zero volt. There is no Zero old. Old. potential difference between source and substrate. Okay, wow. yes, sir. Yes, now sir. look at this one. Yes, this is zero. Mass has yes. some resistance, right? This yes, sir. This device will produce some resistance. For example, let you assume 0 0.05 volt. Okay, for example, example only 0 0.05 volt. This person is zero volt. What is the substrate? Source and substrate voltage here. VSP. This is zero. This is zero point zero five volt. What is the potential? If you measure multimeter from this point to this point, it should be zero, sir. Zero. How it will be zero? zero. See here, we are connecting the multimeter like this. What is the potential yes, difference it will show? Point, point, sir. 
point zero five ohm. Understand? Point zero five. Now you yes, see sir. this point. Let us assume there is an incremental of point. There is a drop of point zero five ohm. Year point one ohm. Okay, ma. Year point yes, one ohm. Year zero ohm. What is the potential difference? It will show. Point zero zero one. Point zero zero one. No, no. Point year point one ohm. Year zero ohm. What is the potential difference? It will show. Point one minus zero. What is the potential difference? Point one. Point one. Point one. Okay. Now you see in this general equation, you don't have the substrate. Okay, wa. Yes, sir. Now look at yes, this one. Uh, this is uh, your threshold voltage modification due to substrate effect. Okay. So this threshold voltage modification due to substrate effect depends the uh, how your device is connected. That's all. You see now. You see in this one. You will have the VSB, the threshold voltage modified due to the substrate. It depends the position of the device. You see, we are using the MOSFET. Okay, it may be P MOS or N MOS. Yes. Look at the pull-up devices. There are three devices. Okay, these three devices are P MOS devices connected as a pull-up devices. All source and substrate are connected to VDD. So there is no VSP. Is it right? There is no VSP. Yes, if there is no VSP means this second term becomes zero. So what is VTP? VTP is nothing but VT, VTO. What is VTO? VTO is nothing but this formula. We found this formula. This formula. Okay, ma. At the same yes, time, now we look at the circuit. You take this transistor. That means pull down network. This person there is no substrate effect because VSP is zero. Okay, this person yes. has substrate effect. The value is VSP is 0.05 volt. This person has some other substrate effect. The value is 0.1 volt. Can you understand? The threshold voltage of the fourth device is VTO. For example, this is uh, suppose your VTO is 0.8 volt. That is 0.8 volt. Fifth device VTN is not a VTO. It is something greater than VTO. It may be 0.822. Sixth day, this is a sixth device. This is a fifth device. Fourth device VTN will be, it may be 0.834 volt because your substrate voltage increases. Fifth device, this is your fifth device. So your fifth device substrate voltage is 0.05 volt. Accordingly, your substrate voltage also increases. Sixth device, your substrate voltage is 0.1 volt. Accordingly, your substrate voltage also increases. So can you understand? Now this threshold voltage modified due to the portion of your mass devices. Can you understand? Yes, sir. Clear. Now you see. For example, now yes, I give one more example also. Uh, instead of NAND gate, let us take a uh, NAR gate, three input NAR gate, three input NAR gate. Same input A B C A B C. This is your output. Okay. Wow. So again, same thing. The substrate is connected to VDD. This substrate is connected to VDD. PMA substrate. This substrate is connected to VDD. Here, this is connected to ground. This one is connected to ground. This one is connected to ground. Let me give the number for each and every device. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so what is the substrate effect of the P mass de N mass devices? Do they have the substrate effect? N mass devices, uh, no sir. No, because VSB is zero. Yes. Any device you take the these two fourth device base and source are connected to same ground potential. Mm -hmm. Fifth device substrate and source are connected to ground potential. Sixth device. Substrate and source is connected to ground protein, so zero. Okay, yes, so your threshold voltage yes, is a simple formula VTO. That's all you take yes, the sir. device one, does it has a substrate effect VSB of device one? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. How it will be? This is your source, this is your substrate, this is your source, this is your substrate, this is your source, this is your substrate. Source is connected to VDD, substrate also connected to VDD. So zero. Okay, ma? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you take the second person, okay, I'll write this is a device one resistance. Now this is a drain of the device one, drain of the device two, device one, device two. This is source of the device one, your substrate. So now you see this VDD minus drop. For example, VDD is 1.8 volt. Here drop is um, 0.05. Then what happened? Here you will have the 1.75 volt. Can you understand? Yes, yes, this 1.75 volt is the source voltage of the device 2. 1.75 yes, volt. What is the substrate voltage? 1.8 volt. Then there is a difference. What is the difference? 0.05 volt. 0 0.05 0 0.5 volt. Yes, so volt. device 2 will have the substrate effect. So yes, what sir. happens to device 3? Once again, let us assume the same drop, 0 0.05. So here, what is the drop? 1.7 volt. This substrate is connected to 1.8 volt. The difference will be 1 volt. Okay. Yes, now what you have to understand, the result voltage of device 1 is different from device 2. Device 2 is different from device 3. Can you agree? Yes, sir. Because of the, the way in which they are connected and depends the configuration also. Here you see threshold voltage of 4, 5, 6 remains same because they are VTN equal to VTO, there is no substrate effect. This is called second order effect. One of the second order effect is threshold voltage modification due to substrate effect. You see here, threshold voltage modification due to substrate effect. There are many second order effects at that. Okay, suppose you want to look at this one if you are interested. This can you see this one B sim 4V 4.8 MOSFET model? Yes, sir. Right, almost mm -hmm. 185 pages are there. Yes, sir. How many pages? 185. 185 pages are there. Can you guess uh, what is the purpose of this 185 pages? Uh, Sir, for using a NAND or NAR, it should okay. be at least a low voltage. There is a possibility of decreasing a second order effect like that, sir. Uh, Suppose we have to we have to use for all the transistors. On a... It is not a NAND or NAR. Yes, it is for example uh, only yes, I give it. Okay. So you yes, have to understand that yes, it is depends the combination. Right? It depends yes, the combination. Need not be yes, NAND or NAR. Okay. Yes, sir. Suppose you have some transistors in between, definitely it will have the substrate effect. Okay. So yes, now sir. look at this one. This is a mass model. Okay. Almost 25 pages are there to describe the characteristics of a N mass device or P mass device. That's all. Nothing more. If you download this PP, uh, PDF, there is a 185 pages which will describe the characteristics of the mass. Model. That's all. See, for example, I told you this three current equation. These three current equations are suitable for the MOSFET in 10 uh, micron technologies, right? So yes, when yes, you move down, uh, when you, you see ultra submicron technology, your technology goes down. For example, 22 nanometer or 180 nanometer. So what happens? It adds many second order effects. A classical example is if you take a toddler or 3 years old child, okay? The 3 years old child always speak the truth. It won't lie. Yes, sir. Right? It won't yes, lie. Sir. Your mass is not matured. In 1970, mass is not matured. So these three current equations are enough to describe the characteristics of the mass fit. Now, yes, if we move down, maybe uh, 500 nanometer to 180 nanometer, 180 nanometer to 22 nanometer, the mass is matured more. That means it has many number of second order effects. You can't describe the characteristics of the mass fit. Okay. So you see, suppose you are describing the characteristics of the MOSFET, it, you, you can see only the, you can uh, you can describe the characteristics of the MOSFET for particular length and width only. You can say that is a bin. Okay. You can model a MOSFET for a many number of bins are there. Right. This is a bin number one, bin number two. For this bin number one, length is 180 nanometer to some length will be there, maybe three times. L minimum with this uh, 360 nanometer to with maximum of maybe 5 micron like that. So let us assume just to take a, uh, the child growing up. Okay, once they are entered into the college, then how they behave in front of you, teacher, you are a teacher. 
so how they yes, behave sir. suppose uh, how they behave in front of the family member how they behave in front of the principal how they behave in front of the elders how they behave inside uh, uh, when they move out okay so we can describe so when you teach the class okay we may suppose somebody asking you to give the certificate about that student we we'll say that students so obedient discipline you will give the certificate okay suppose the student stay in the hostel you ask the uh, warden to give the certificate his feedback will be entirely different from your your feedback his parent feedback will be entirely different from your feedback is it right it is a collection of yes, information sir. and also you see even though you collect all this information you cannot completely describe the characteristics of that that person that's true is it right how the person will behave if you give if you put that person in an extreme condition assume the person is uh, suppose uh, whatever he is having he is sharing uh, sharing those things to others let us assume like that okay if you have one person that person sharing his food the clothes everything to others now you see you put your person in a 10 days starvation condition starving condition then you offer a meal whether the person will uh, share that meals to others or not that is a question so here mass fed also we can uh, we can describe the characteristics of the mass fed based on the bins okay there are many bins is a collection of the information again this bin characteristics depends the extreme condition if you operate the mass fed at the very low temperature minus 45 degree centigrade to 130 degree centigrade whether the circuit works or not okay similarly various process corner normal maybe the you are added the dopant very high the speed will be increased or decrease less amount of dopant in a particular region speed will be decreased like that you we put a extreme condition a process corner normal normal difficult difficult uh, fast slow slow fast 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 slow slow like that you can put a various possible combination so you display you analyze the circuit that is called modeling so some of the few other second order effects see one is we have seen that uh, it is a threshold voltage variation another one is channel length modulus so what we assumed is so your mass remains as constant okay this we are see up to this point linear region okay beyond this yes, point sir. we can say mass operating in a saturation region but you won't get a constant curve so this what we are assuming that your current remains as constant once it reaches the saturation point the current remains as constant it is not like that due to the channel length modulation the current will be slightly increased okay that based on this current equation you see this is your current equation when the mosfet is operating in a saturation region due to the channel length modulation effect your current equation changes another one is now look at the circuit here yeah. velocity saturation now you see this curve alone this curve alone actually this one this vgs vgs is greater than vgs 4 okay vgs is greater than vgs 4 actually your mass to reach this amount of current for example let me give you some numbers you should get reach the 3 milliampere current okay 3 milliampere current okay let me give some numbers this is 1.5 milliampere current when gate source voltage vgs 5 is greater than vgs 4 this is vgs 4 now you see your voltage is greater than vgs vgs your voltage gate source voltage is greater than vgs 4 but your current remains here what is the reason it is called velocity saturation effect your mass attain saturation much lower than the actual saturation this is the actual saturation your mass weight attains the saturation much lower than the actual saturation due to the velocity saturation because we can see what is the current equation mu n into eds is it right mu n into eds mu n into vds by l okay so this we can say this is a vds actually mu n uh, eds 1 plus eds by ec this is called critical electric field in a lower technology this critical electric field will be high we will operate low fn so now you see denominator term will be less okay denominator denominator term will be low high this uh, denominator term ec will be high when ec is high for example let me give some number eds is 5 volt ec is uh, 20 volt so what happens 5 by 20 1 plus it, you can say it will be closer to 1 so mu into eds now look at the second term when eds is far far higher than the ec 
this is your EDS. Then what happens? The denominator EDS term will be dominant. So mu n EDS divided by EDS. So what happens? It reaches the constant point. So that's why you see mass equals the velocity saturation much lower than the actual saturation. If you look at the curve, this is your actual saturation point. Instead of reaching the actual saturation, your mass reaches the much lower value. Okay, due to the velocity saturation. Why velocity saturation occurs? Because your critical field electric electric field is less than your drain source voltage. It depends the technology. Once again, if it is a 10 micron technology, 10 micron technology, suppose you assume this is a 20 volt, EDS will be your VDS by L. VDS is uh, 5 volt divided by L, 10 micron. So what happens? You will get 0.0 volt per micrometer. Can you understand? This is 20 volt per micrometer. This is 0.0 volt per micrometer. So your EC is far, far greater than your EDS. Good. Whereas in a submicron technology, let us take a uh, 22 nanometer technology, your voltage is 1 volt, this length is 22 nanometer, you will get a some fraction part, whereas your um, this your EDS, you will get some thousands of volt, whereas EC will be 1 volt per micrometer. So your EC will be less than your EDS. Whenever e EC is greater than, far, far greater than EDS, velocity saturation will not occur. But in submicron technology and deep submicron technology, EDS will be greater than EC, velocity saturation will occur. This is one of the second order effects. Like that, there are many second order effects are there. Another one is subtersal conduction. In subtersal conduction, if you, suppose you see, in your MOSFET, what is you, uh, when VGS is less than VTN, what is the drain current? A to source voltage less than threshold. Sir. Threshold voltage. Yes, sir. Which is less than means ID should be zero. ID should be... Zero. ID should be zero. But it's strictly zero, speaking, yes, ID is not a zero. So what we are yes, assuming, we are assuming our device start from this point. Okay. We are, this is your VGS. We are mm -hmm. sweeping the VGS. This point is VT. Let us assume this is a point per milliampere. What is our assumption? Your mass is starting from this point, current increases. Is that right? Yes, sir. When VGS is less than zero, it is zero only. Your current is zero only. When VGS is greater than or equal to VTN, it jumps from 0.5 milliampere. Okay. It is not like that. This region, your mass conducts. The conduction is known as subtersal conduction. This region, how your mass fit will behave? Will it behave as a mass fit? What is the difference between mass yeah. and DJT? Cutoff linear region should be narrow. Both, both see BJT also will have the cutoff linear saturation. Yes, saturation, you can say here active. Mass yes, cutoff linear active. If you see the output yes, characteristic sir. curve, they are almost same. Then yes, what is sir. the difference? A starting point is zero for a VJT, sir, but it will be different. VJT uh, also, uh, point level. unless you yes, uh, it is greater than VBN, your cutoff voltage is greater than VBN, 0.7 volt, 13 voltage. Yes, sir. Your base voltage yes, is greater than 0.7 volt only, it will conduct, otherwise, it won't conduct. Is that right? Yes, sir. But here you see, strictly speaking, you can say this is a substitute conduction. Your mass ID. You take any equation, it may be linear linear region or saturation region. Current is the obeys the square law. Here voltage square minus voltage square. Is it right? Current obeys square law. Here also some voltage square. Is it right? VGS minus VTN volt square is the voltage square. Current obeys square law. Whereas your BJT, current obeys exponential law. IC is IS into E to the power of VBE. Okay. Current obeys exponential law, where mass fed current obeys square law, V square, right? VGS minus VTN. When mass is operating in a saturation region, when your mass fed is operating in a uh, sorry, subtersal conduction region or less than the cutoff region, it will behave as a BJT device. 
So normally in the 80s, most of the people used to buy a say, amplifier in a substitution contraction to get a very good gain. Because you see, when I design a amplifier, I need a very good gain. Is it right? Gain, we can say GM into R0. GM is the gain. What is GM for your um, BJT device? It depends the IC. What is ICQ? IS into E to the power of VB by VT. So if you tune smaller amount of base emitter voltage, you will get a larger amount of ICQ. If you get larger amount of ICQ, you will get a very good amount of GM. Whereas in your MOSFET, gain is same. But what is a GM? GM is beta into voltage. Okay. So GM, the same amount of change in voltage, you will get less GM in your MOSFET. You will get very good GM in your BJT. So that's why what happens in 80s and 90s, people try to bias the MOSFET when you want to make the amplifier in a subthersal conduction. Because in this subthersal conduction, if you bias the MOSFET, you'll get a very good gain. If it is a very good gain, means you can get a very easy, you can get a, uh, you can attain a very good gain and you can design a very good gain amplifier. Can you understand? So these are the few second order effects I narrated. There are many second order effects, your interest you can refer. So as I told you, uh, MOSFET, so MOSFET you can use to construct a digital, analog, as well as uh, memory. memory. So, so digital switch. You see, I plotted the voltage transfer characteristic code. So what is the voltage transfer characteristic code? Just to sweep the input voltage from 0 to VDD, observe the output voltage. Okay? Observe the output voltage. So for example, input is, uh, let us assume input is less than VTN. Then what happens? Input is threshold voltage. Minimum. Less than threshold voltage. Yes, sir. Minimum value, sir. You need to say minimum value, low value. No, no, no. What is the output voltage? Output what is the current? Voltage. Current will be zero, sir. Zero, huh? So what is V naught? V naught, we can say VDD minus ID into R. Shall you say? Apply K value VDD minus ILRL equal to V naught. Is it right? Yes, sir. When ID equal to zero, what is V naught? VDD only. VDD only. So v my input is zero volt. My input is zero volt. What is output volt? Zero, we can say logic zero, logic low. VDD, we can say logic high. Logic low, we can say zero. Logic I, we can say one. What is the output? To, what you will get? Your input is zero, logic zero. What is the output? High, sir. Logic I, zero, one. Understand? So your device yes, will be in cut off region. OK, yes. Yes. now you see, another one is uh, your device is off. Now you sweep the input voltage from zero to VD. Slowly you can sweep. Then what happens? One point of time when V in is greater than VTN your device will enter into the saturation region. Because you see, what is VDS? Your ID is beta n by 2 VGS minus VTN whole square. Okay, wow. So let us assume. Now you see VGS is, VTN is 0.8 volt. This is 0.81. The difference is 0.01. Is it right? So yes, 0 0.01 whole so. square. ID will be, uh, now ID start to flow. Let us assume 0 0.1 milliampere. 0 0.1 milliampere into RL. So VDD is let us assume 1.8 volt. Now the drop is 0 0.1 volt. So what happens? 1.7 volt. Is right? Now the yes. drop. This is 1. Now increase the VGS value 0 0.81 to 0 0.82. So what happens? 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, like that. Is right? More than, more than 1.8. Uh, one, one, it won't go beyond 1.8. So it is, because this is a maximum voltage is 0 to VDD. Not beyond VD. So it okay. starts to decrease. One point of some start to decrease. Now you see uh, it is closer 1.8 volt minus 1.7 volt. It comes to 1.1 volt like that. So you have the two conditions. VGS is greater than VT and VDS should be greater than VGS minus VT. Okay, wow. to operate the device in a saturation region. VGS, let us assume 1.8 volt minus 0.8 volt VTN. So 1 volt. What is VDS? This point of time, VDS is your 
almost closer to 0.2 volt. Whether 0.2 volt is greater than 1 volt? No, sir. No, it is less than 1 volt. So, less this is the one. condition for operating the device in saturation region. If it uh, reversed, VDS is less than VGS minus VGS. Then what is the region it operates? See, here, there are three regions. One is cut off. Okay, wow. yes, Zero yes, volt is cut off. When it is something greater than zero, initially it enters into, for example, let me take this point voltage. What is a VGS minus VTN? VGS minus VTN is 0 0.1 volt. What is VDS? If you measure this value, it is closer to 1.8 volt. Is it right? 1.8 yes, volt. You measure 1.7 volt. Whether 1.7 volt is greater than 1.1 volt or not? Yes, sir. Definitely greater, sir. So you can say the device is operation as per condition. The VDS is greater uh, than saturation. VGS minus VTN device is operating in a saturation. We are computing that every each and every point we are computing. One point of time we found that VDS is less than VGS minus VTN. Then what is the region it operates? Here cut off from A to B saturation. Then beyond B, what is the region it will operate? Linear. Linear. Okay. So suppose you want to construct a circuit device uh, as a digital circuit, let us assume. Instead of connecting the variable source, variable source, okay, let me construct the circuit like this. You have one switch and supply, VDD. The switch is open, then what is V input? Um, switch is open, what is VDD? V input. VDD, V input, uh, no sir, zero. Zero, then what is output? Output is uh, whatever we did, we get out. Ah, because IDR is IDRL is zero. We'll get here. Yes, sir. We did as out. V in uh, V out is V D D. Input is zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, wow. So now you close the switch. What is the input? Uh, G -G input is. Uh, Zero, sir. The, that means input. V in what is the switch? Yes, sir. What is the input? Zero volt. Uh, zero. Uh. Here it yes, is sir. connected with VDD. VDD, VDD connected. VDD, yes, almost here. What is the output voltage? How also VDD, sir? Output, how it will be VDD? VDD minus IDRD is V out. Okay, wow. now yes, ID sir. increases, IDRD comes closer to VDD. So VDD minus VDD is? Zero. Zero. Zero volt. So zero, if input is VDD, what is your output? Zero volt. Input zero, zero volt, means sir. output logic one. Input yes, logic sir. one means output? Zero. Zero. What is the, can you name the circuit? Not, uh, not yet, inverter. Uh, inverter. This, we can say it is an inverter. How to construct an inverter? What what is the job you are doing? Both N MOS and B MOS. Okay, that C MOS inverter. C -MOS See, what we did is we are not we are not done anything. Just if you don't give supply, your output is logic I. If you give supply, your output is VDD. Is that right? Yes, sir. For an inverter, don't give anything. No input. Or give input as zero. Output is one. Input as VDD, output is zero. That's all. Right, you are not doing anything else, is right? Just simply on and off the device. Whereas here you see saturation region in saturation. That means suppose you want to construct a digital circuit, you have to operate the circuit in a two region. One is cutoff region. That means your input should be 0 to 0.8 volt VTN. Okay. Another one is linear region, that means closer to 1.8 volt. Maybe let me assume this point input voltage is. 1.6 volt to 1.8 volt. Okay, wa? your input is between 0 to 0.8 volt. Output is logic I. Is right? This is your input. Your input is 0 to 0.8 volt. Output is logic I. Your input is 1.6 to 1.8 volt. Output is logic low value. So, ideal, you can say 0 volt, 1.8 volt is the ideal value. But practically, you can say 0 to 0.8 volt as a, we are defining as logic low value. And 1.6 to 1.8 volt, we are defining as a logic 
high value. What is the value in between these two A? What is the value between A and B? 0.8, sir. Huh? 0.8. Not 0.8. See here, here output voltage is you can say 1.7. Here you can say yes, 0.2 volt. What is this one? Cut off linear. Cut off yes, and linear. Cut -off. Okay. For example, let you assume uh, if your input voltage is 0.8 volt, even 0.8 volt, your output is 1.8 volt. Your input yes, voltage is 1.7 volt, output is 0 volt. Understand? Yes, if sir. your input is 1 volt, what is output voltage? Your input voltage is 1 volt, what is output voltage? Less than 0.8, sir. Okay, see, we define if output voltage is 1.6 to 1.8, it is logic I. We have defined. We are given yes, a sir. definition. Similarly, your output voltage is 0.2 to 0 volt, logic low value. Okay, now you got some yes, value sir. here. You got some value here. For example, let me give you 1 volt. How can you define 1 volt? Whether it is logic I or logic low value? Logic I. How can you say logic I? Logic I means it should be greater than 1.7 volt. Your output voltage is greater than 1.7, we can say logic I. Your output voltage is moderate is one, sir. Huh? In, in between moderates, uh, the, neither, neither zero nor. Uh, you can't define, it is undefined state. Okay, so this undefined state, you can say it is a metastable state. What we can say? It is a metastable state. Metastable. So neither your output is logic I, nor your output is logic low. We never operate our digital circuit in a metastable state. Can you understand? Can you understand? Yes, so either yes, we sir. give input at zero volt, if it is an inverter, output will be logic 1. Or input will be logic i, that means maximum VDD, your output will be logic low. Understand? Because of surrounding noises, maybe there is a small fluctuation in the input voltages, but it will be tolerated. It will be tolerated. What will be the, if suppose your output is greater than 1.7 volt, it will be assumed as a logic 1. If it is less than 0.2 volt, it is assumed to be a logic 0 value. So, this region is a unused region and also we can say metastable state or we can say it is a noise region. Okay. Understand? Okay. Whereas yes. this is your MOSFET is a switch. Your MOS also having the capacitor that we'll see later on. So this threshold voltages. See here, your MOSFET, you know that uh, when you connect to, let us assume, uh, gate range source, right? When it is connected to VDD, okay? When it is connected to VDD, see what happens actually? Earlier, it is charges to VDD. Earlier, output is charges to VDD. Gate is connected to VDD. Then what will happen? Your, this is your output node. Output is connected to VDD. Now your device is switched on. Then what will happen? Mm -hmm. Take this device alone. VDD, VDD will be so good, sir. No, no, no. Double, 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 double. See here, this is your VDD. Yes, sir. Output is VDD. Okay. okay now sir. you are switching on the device. It then will be dropping happens? into dropping into ground, sir. Ah, it will drop into ground. On time, it will let us assume mechanical switch, it is just like a shorter. If it is an active switch, yes, it has some resistance. Resistance and you have the capacitor. Slowly to discharge, finally you'll get a zero volt, is it right? Yes, sir. Now the same thing, let us assume. I want to store some charges here. Initially, zero volt. Initially, zero volt. Now gate is connected to VDD. So what is the charge will be acquired across this capacitor? Uh, <coughs> VDD minus a VT in the like that's a capacitor having VDD means point. Uh, this will start to charge yes, initially yes. zero volt is there then it will write 0.1 volt 0.2 volt 0.3 volt gate yes, is sir. remains as vdd is right it always VDD, yes, 1.8 volt this will rise yes, assume it comes 1.1 volt what is the gate source potential 1.8 volt minus 1.1 volt let us assume this is one volt not 1.1 1.8 volt 
threshold voltage of the NMOS device is 0.8 volt. Then what happens? VGS now it is equal to 0.8 volt. The threshold voltage also 0.8 volt. The device will be off. Switch it off. Switch it off. It won't further charge. It won't further charge. So what is the output voltage you will get? VDD minus VTN only. You VTN. Can you understand? So we can yes, say, sir. suppose you are getting VDD here, you can say strong one. VDD is the logic one. Now it is not a VDD, it is a weak one. Weak one. Here it is strong zero. It passes strong zero. Where NMOS device passes strong zero, but weak one. It is uh, vice versa in PMOS device. PMOS will pass strong one. You see, if you connect a V here, VSG will be always VDD because gate is grounded. So completely it will charge, it will reach VDD. Understand? Yes, sir. Completely it will charge, it will reach VDD. Whereas here you see, uh, if you start to decrease, what happens? Initially VDD slowly comes down. This point is grounded. So one point of time it will be VTP. When we, it is VTP, less than VTP, it won't allow to discharge. So what is the... Uh, uh, what is the lower voltage it will hold it will hold it won't hold zero volt it will hold vdd minus vtp okay so we can say yes, p sir. mass passes strong one weak zero the n mass passes weak one uh, weak one uh, sorry v uh, n zero. Mass passes strong zero weak one weak one yes, okay that's why you see Always pull up network. Inverter, you see, they take the inverter. This is a pull up network. So it will pass as one. It will charge to VDD. P mass will be, uh, pull down network will be N mass. So it will completely discharge. Can I understand? P mass yes, will completely charge. N mass will be completely discharged. So you will get a VDD R0. There are two possible. Let you assume something you reverse. You use you are using the pull down network as uh, NMOS device pull up network as this is called pull up network. This is called pull down network. You are using pull okay. up network as NMOS device and pull down network as PMOS. Device. Then what will happen? Zero under VDD. Same thing connected to a VDD. Increasing in now uh, zero to so this zero one NMOS will not charge up to VDD. It will charge up to VDD minus VTN. Okay, P mass will not discharge completely. It will discharge VDD minus uh, zero minus VT. Can you understand? Yes, sir. So, for example, let us assume VDD is five volt, VTN is 0. 0.4 volt. So, yeah, while charging, what you will get? 4.6 volt. Okay, yes, you won't get five volt. Instead of five volt, you will get 4.6 volt. While discharging, you won't get zero volt. You will get 0. 0.4 volt only. Can you understand? VDD so, minus VTP. That's why we never connect NMOS device in a pull up network. We never connect PMOS device in a pull down network. We'll always connect PMOS device in a pull up network and NMOS device in a pull up pull down network because it passes strong zero. Understand? So now you see, yes, you want to design a switch. The simplest, simple logic is what you have to do is this is your MOSFET. I want to make it as a switch. What I have to do? Either give zero, you will get, it depends the combination. Okay, it depends the combination. Can you understand? Suppose it is ungate, it depends the combination. You will get your output. If it is a logic I value, you will get your output. So, biasing is so simple. You need not worry about the biasing. You see, eh? whereas in your analog, so this is an inverter. This inverter will, that will come later. Inverter will operate in a various region. So I, as I told you, this region is an unused region. We can say noise. Okay. Yes, sir. So in your analog, let us take the analog. The most important region is this region. The most important region is this region. You see, I have taken the small midpoint. This midpoint, I recall the signal very small. The signal strength may be millivolt. What is the output? So VDD minus ID into RD, that is your output voltage. Okay, wow. yes, ID yes, is beta n into VOV square, beta n by 2 into. VOV is VGS minus VTN whole square. Okay, square law, 0.1 
square is you have some value 0.2 square the value will increase 0.3 square the value will increase continuously okay then what happens actually so you are revealing the very small signal what you are getting you are getting the largest signal is it right so here the signal is millivolt here the signal value is volt range understand here the signal is millivolt here the signal is volt range so the device is amplifying where to you have to bias you have to bias in a proper region biasing point to be optimized so you see here this is a this is a voltage transfer characteristic curve the first point is you have to bias the device in a saturation region understand between a yes, and p if you bias the device it will amplify if you bias the device less than a point or greater than b point it won't act as an amplifier it will act as a switch understand either the switch will be closed or it will be open if you bias less than a point or beyond b point it will act as a switch on and off only whereas if you bias between a and b it will act as an amplifier same device same device if you bias between a and b it will act as an amplifier but where you can choose whether this point there are many points are there a to b let us assume there are hundreds of points are there where you will bias it point it point you see i chosen the point biasing point closer to a here we are chosen biasing point closer to b see here the amplifier should produce the symmetrical waveform okay undistorted symmetrical waveform if you choose this one closer to b what happens some portion of the input waveform it goes to the cutoff region is it right some portion it goes to the cutoff region less than 0.8 so your output will be clipped off because your device will be switched off when your input voltage is less than threshold voltage your device will be switched off it remains zero zero only understand so your yes, output sir. waveform will be clipped off similarly when you when your when your operating point is closer to b what happens you are it will enter into the linear region once you enter into the linear region it don't amplify it will act as a switch only so this point also clipped off so you have to choose a biasing point such a way that you have to get a undistorted output waveform that is the first one okay first one is you have to choose a biasing point should be the midpoint of the saturation region why you want to choose the biasing point midpoint of the saturation region because to get the maximum output voltage so for example this is assume 5 volt okay i can bias here i can get a 1 volt as a output voltage swing i can bias here i can get 1 volt as a output voltage symmetrical output voltage swing but which one you will prefer whether you will prefer to get a 5 volt as a gain or 1 volt as a gain 5 volt 5 volt because you want to maximize what is the purpose yes, of sir. amplifier you want to maximize Maximum. the gain that's all you want to amplify the signal so it's the same device for the same configuration if it, it can be amplify 5 volt mean you prefer that one is right rather than a 1 volt second one is it should produce the undistorted output waveform it should be sinusoidal waveform it should not be clipped one okay it should not be a square wave like that because natural signals are the continuous sinusoidal signal only so now we see another point the most important point is see something happens see here this range is very low this range is this uh, this range is very low millivolt only for example this is 0.8 volt this is 1 volt almost only 200 millivolt is there only 200 millivolt okay something happen there is some disturbance is there this input signal something you are uh, you are bias a circuit okay uh um, this device because of the extreme temperature the operating point move to here then what will happen my midpoint will be changing sir not midpoint will be changing your gain will be reduced or you get a distorted output waveform or okay. something it moves to here once again either you reduce the input voltage to get the gain lower gain or a distorted waveform you will get it is right so the most yes, important sir. thing of analog design is first you have to identify where to bias again second one is even though there is a disturbances you have to identify the biasing circuit which is free from the disturbances for example the simple thing is i bias the device here okay because of the temperature my operating point raised to here okay you have to choose the biasing circuit such a way that even though there is a rise in the uh even though there is a movement in the operating point it has to bring back that operating point to the previous value or original biased value 
it may be movement may be the this may be the fluctuation but your operating point should settle very quickly then only you will get a very good application understand so the thing yes. is for a digital design it is a very simple so either you give zero or one uh, vdd your circuit will work understand for analog design it is not so simple first one is you have to identify the right operating point to get the maximum output what is being second one is the output point should not be moved okay it should be stable there is a variation fluctuation the uh, many fluctuation will be there maybe the current processor may vary or any any operational condition changes the operating point must remain same you have to choose the biasing circuit such a way that uh, it should be uh, it should it should not change the operating but there are many methods are there so appropriate op uh, biasing method you have to choose okay so next one is yes, memory see here uh, the same circuit you see <coughs> for a digital for digital this is a you don't like this region is it right if you are a digital engineer you don't like this region which is called as a meta stable okay or noise it is a noise in a digital right because you can't define you can't define this whole area this is a noise whereas in your analog this is a useful region this is a useful region because here only your signal get amplified so you are uh, maybe the digital system design what you teach to your student this you will teach in your electronic circuit what you will teach you will teach this one your vlsi design you will teach combine okay so <coughs> the third one is you see third one is uh, your memory how can you design a memory circuit the simple logic is actually you want to store the things you have the inverter let us assume the inverter there are two inverters are there right you are writing some values so let us assume there is a two transistors there okay so i yes, want sir. to write one here you perform a right operation right operation so give the logic one so input also this you can say i drawn this one as a inverter that's all okay this is one inverter this is another inverter this is one inverter this is another inverter so you'll have the m5 m6 this is a bit line bit line bit line bar i want to write one here so bit line bit line bar is a complement zero what happens here one when you write a one year n mas will conduct mm -hmm. n mas will conduct you will get one year here again n mas will conduct you will get zero year so this is a inverter so what will happen this inverter what it will do if you want it to be a zero after that zero, zero? In the, now what same one uh, one now just you assume you remove this bit line signal remove this bit line signal then yes, what sir. happens and remove right signal also so what is the value stored across these two capacitor there are two capacitor uh, yes sir you more um, uh, nearby see, this cp1 will store what cp2 will store cp1 stores ones and cp2 stores zero sir cp1 will stores one cp2 will store zero okay yes sir so how long it will stay how long this will stay CP1 will store one, CP2 will store zero. So the one should be grounded, sir, and uh, maybe fluctuation like zero to one. So Just, it's not like that. You see here, I wrote some one year information one year, right? That's all. Sir. I want to write one. Okay. Yes. So here we are forcing zero. That's all. We don't need zero. Always we will yeah. write and retrieve from one point only. I have written one year. Okay, I removed everything. Bit line I removed. The value bit line used to store the value that I have removed. So now you see M5. This uh, word line also I removed everything. Nothing is there. How long so, it will store one zero value? Q is zero. Q bar is one. How long it will store? As a capacitor, the one will be stored in CP and the permanent it will be stored sir. Yes, there is no system uh, until you remove the supply voltage yes. until yes. you remove the okay. supply voltage it will store the one and zero okay 
right see yes, here sir. it is just like a only digital circuit it is a digital circuit you are what you are doing you are flipping the two inverters you are flipping the two inverter and you are designing the memory set is it right you are yes, flipping sir. the two inverters back to back you see this inverter let me say this combination is a one inverter and another combination this is another inverter okay right i can write one or zero once i store it remains until i remove this supply voltage how will you yes, read the value very yes, timing sir it's me yeah no earlier bit line and bit line bar i'll write here yes, sir bit line is 1 bit line bar is 0 i enable word line word line to enable to 0 uh, 1 say maybe so far uh, for avoiding confusion i want to write q as 1 so q equal to 1 q bar equal to 0 is it right here q yes, i put one year year 0 now q stores 1 q bar stores 0 right i want to read the information i want to read the information let us assume you have the two switches here you have the capacitor this is a capacitor this is your supply voltage similar the same thing is here you have the capacitor You are the supply voltage. You are the capacitor. Switch one, position two, position one, position two. Initially, one is closed, two is open. Then what happens? This capacitor, these two capacitor. Uh, whatever VDD value that will be stored in CC. Okay. So Now sir. it is stored to VDD. This one also stored yes, to VDD. Yes, sir. Okay. Time. Zero minus CL store C stores the VDD both the capacitors. Let me say yes, C one as well as C two store the VDD. Now what happens? You are close opening switch one. Switch two is closed. Then what happens? This switch is closed. This switch is also closed. Last uh, saved value should be transferred to the next year one. one. Logic value year one. Can you understand? Year one. Yes, sir. Year one. What is the value you stored here? Already VDD. No, no. Year. What is the value you stored? One, VDD. Sir. That means logic one. Year. Logic what is the value one. you stored? One. Year. Year. Zero, sir. Zero. Zero. Because it is a complement. BL one yes, means BL bar zero. Once again, you enable the word line. Word line to logic eight. Then what happens? M five is on. M six is on. Is it right? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So year also one, year also one. Whether the current will flow? Yes, sir. Will it flow? No, no, sir. It is inverter, sir. No, no, no. Year also one. Now the device is on. Year also one. Will the current flow? Yes, sir. I will let it flow, sir. It won't flow because both the potentials are same. See, same. Yes, sir. So minus one, one, minus one. There is a imbalance in the yes, potential sir. difference. 5 volt, yes, 0.8 okay, volt. Sir. The current will flow. 5 volt, 4.8 volt. Current will flow. 5 volt, 5 volt. The current will not flow because potential zero, difference zero. is same. Now yes, look at this one. What will happen? Will the current flow here? Here zero means this is on. So look yes, at sir. the circuit. Zero means this is on. This is off. Okay. Here it is connected to one means this is off. This is on. Understand? Yes, sir. M2 yes, is off, M1 is on. Since M4 is on, it will continue its charge. It reaches one. Here you see, this is off. Okay, it holds zero. Now one is there. Then what happens? This device is on. This device also on. Here one is there. Then what will happen? These two devices are on. Yes, sir. Whether current is off. No, M5 is on, M1 also on. See here, M5 is on, M1 also on. Okay, here you have the logic one. Okay, will the current will flow, discharge or not? Here you see, this means five. Let us assume one point eight volt is here. Here zero volt is there. These two are on. 
Is the current flow or not? Yes, sir. Current will flow. Okay. So what yes, happens sir. after few uh, few seconds, few micro, maybe let us take a tau phi tau time period, it will completely discharge. Is that right? One will be yes, sir. your charge the capacity, it will recharge, it will get zero. What happens here? It won't discharge because this device is off. Discontinuity yes, apart. Okay. Again, you see these two remains in the same potential. It won't discharge. So you measure after certain time duration. Maybe uh, initially what we did is charge the capacitor connected across bit line and bit line bar, logic one. After five to time period, what we can measure? Bit line will produce a logic one. Bit line bar will produce a zero. That means what we have stored, we have stored logic one at Q, zero at Q bar. Is that right? While reading, we are getting logic one at Q from Q and zero from Q bar. Can you understand? Yes, sir. Like that, the circuit will work. Yes, sir. But you see, the most important thing is it is a it is a it is a memory circuit. It is a back to back of a inverter. Okay. So digital, just uh, digital it working based on the principle of digital circuit. Right now, you see we have the. Uh, um, Digital circuit, you are operating the digital circuit in saturation and just here. When I want to use this device as a digital circuit, either give zero volt or VDD. Is that right? Can you understand? Yes, you sir. operate the device in cutoff and linear. So Suppose I want to amplify the signal, operate the device in a saturation region. That's all. If you connect these two devices in back to back, it will work as a memory. See what happens actually, this film fit all these things, it has steep curve. See here, this will be micro volt. There is a fin fit, you take a fin fit, R, C and T fit, R, T fit. All these technologies are very good because here you see this is unused region in a digital circuit, is right? This is unused region in a digital circuit. You need a narrow bandwidth. For a digital, it is very good. They are very good in fin, uh, to design a digital circuit. FinFET is good. CNTFET is good. TFET is also good because it is a very narrow band. So noise margin will be high. Okay. So because noise is will be band is very less. Whereas in an analog circuit, if it is a micro volt, there is a smaller disturbance will push your device out of the saturation region. It will come to the cutoff region or Linear region. That's why these devices are not suitable to design a analog device. At least you need a millivolt range of bandwidth. Okay, this region, saturation region, bandwidth should be millivolt range. Then only we can design a very good analog circuit. Understand? Yes. Maybe you can propose some solution which can overcome this limitation. See, actually, uh, when you say the analog circuit, there are many parameters at that. So always, have you seen this one? What can you name this and this one? Mirror circuit, sir. Hmm? Mirror. Mirror. No solution. This is a simple differential amplifier. A differential, yes, sir. Differential. Amplifier. This is a telescopic differential amplifier. So actually, what we want to uh, maximize the gain. Okay, here yes, gain will be GM into R, R not one yes, parallel to R not three. To boost yes, the gain, we added the more number of transistors. Okay, okay. Wow. so output voltage swing from here. What is the maximum output voltage swing you will get? Maximum, what is the maximum yeah. output voltage you can get from any circuit? So yeah, more. Huh? V1 plus V2. No, no, no. See, so, yeah, I put I want to make it as an amplifier. What is the maximum voltage yeah. I can get it here? V did. Huh? VDD. VDD. VDD is not possible. Why VDD is not possible? If you are getting VDD, it means this device is operating in a cutoff region. Can you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, maximum possible is VDD by 2. Okay. VDD by 2. If you use the discrete uh, amplifier circuit. Now, you see, theoretically, we can say VDD. You want to keep all these devices in a saturation region. Okay. You have to keep all this device in a saturation region, then only it will amplify the signal. There is a small amount of voltage VDS is requested to keep M7 in a saturation. 
m5 in a saturation m3 in a saturation like that let us assume some value okay so 0.2 volt let us assume 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 so vdd is 1.8 volt minus 5 into 0 0.2 what is it, this one 1.8 volt minus 1 volt 0.8 volt okay here what is the output voltage swing 0.2 or is the output you can get after drop remaining voltage is your output voltage swing see drop across this one remaining voltage we can say output voltage similarly here drop across each transistor remaining voltage we can say output voltage so 0.8 volt here you see same logic here 1.8 volt here 0.2 volt here 0.2 volt here 0.2 volt what is the output voltage swing here 1.8 minus 0.6 1.4 volt which will give more output voltage swing whether the a or b yes a but you see yes. <coughs> who will give the more gain a or b b b because it has when you connect more number of transistor it will produce more amount of output resistance so gain will be more so here output voltage swing is more here gain is more is it right so always yes. we we'll worry about the dynamic range what is the dynamic range dynamic range we can say output voltage by noise now we see telescopic we have constructed this uh, we are taking this topology to boost up the gain. At the same time, what is the cost we paid? Voltage gain increase, but what is the cost we paid? Right. Reduce dynamic uh, range. Yes, dynamic range is reduced. So we can say dynamic range is a ratio of signal power by noise power. Here you have the clue. What we can do? See here, dynamic range, I want 100. Okay. Here, here the circuit has uh, 50 by uh, 50 by uh, 0.5. Yes, so what we got is right. Yes, now is power signal reduced by 20. I want 100 always. This dynamic range should be. A, we should right. increase noise power, sir. We should increase the ratio. Decrease noise power. And decrease noise power. Yes. Instead of 0.5, if we decrease to 0.2, what happens? This remains as constant. Yes, if it is 0.5, then only. You won't get 100, you will get something less than 100, is it right? If you reduce yes, the noise power, definitely it will be 100. That is a yes, trick. While you are an analog yes, engineer, design engineer, what you will do? You want to decrease the noise power. How can you decrease noise power? It will be noise power will be kT by C. Okay. So, by the way of choosing the bigger amount of capacitor, this capacitor. If you take the bigger amount of capacitor, definitely noise power will be reduced. But you see, if you choose the bigger amount of capacitor, noise power will be reduced. Dynamic increase, but you see, capacitor will occupy a lot of area. First one. Another one is this output should drive the larger amount of capacitor. Then what happens? You have to strengthen these devices. How can you strengthen devices? Current is directly proportional to width. So increase the width of the devices. When you increase the width of the devices, area will increase. Area will increase. If area increases, current flow increases, then what happens? It will consume more power. Can you understand? Yes, sir. So what is our objective? We want to increase the gain. While increasing the gain, dynamic range is affected. We want to keep the dynamic range as it is. What we did is we have increased the size of the capacitor. When you increase the size of the capacitor, area increases, power increases. See, okay. the challenges in analog design is in digital, when you scale down the size, directly your speed will increase. When you scale down the side, speed will increase, power will be decreased, area will be decreased. That is the advantages. Whereas here, when you scale down the technology, GMR naught will be reduced. GMR naught is a gain. Okay, GMR naught will be reduced. To compromise GMR naught, we are going the some other topology to boost up the GMR naught from the simple differential amplifier through the telescopic. When you telescope, if you move to the telescopic, what happens? Dynamic range reduces. To increase the dynamic range, we are increasing the capacitor. When you increase the capacitor, what happens? Area, you are, area increases. When increase. area increases, your power, power of increases. When power of increases, you have the more resistance and capacitance. What happens? Your um, charging and discharging will be. Uh, you have the more resistance and capacitance. Actually, you are charging and your gain of amplifier. The speed will also decrease. Okay, so scaling down the technology to increase the speed, 
to decrease the power to decrease the area but what happens it uh, <coughs> it doesn't meet those specification you are scaled down the technology but your speed is not increased your power is not decreased your area is not decreasing your analog can you understand so but you yes, see sir. the most important thing is the <coughs> your digital circuit you have the various capacitor in your devices okay this capacitor we can group those things are used as a charging and discharge right let me say there are various capacitors drain source gate substrate so you have various capacitors cgd cgs cda cd yes like that there are gate to substrate cds uh source to substrate many capacitors so what we'll do is we'll group those capacitors we'll connect with the output node so what happens this is a load capacitance and also parasitic capacitance when you switch on the device you are all on this capacitance will be involved so it will have some rise time fall time it will have the propagation delay so this r and sin decide the speed of the circuit your parasitic capacitance what is the role of parasitic capacitance in digital design what is the role of this parasitic capacitance in digital design Around, around. R and C. What is the role of this parasitic capacitor? It designs the speed of the circuit. How fast it can charge and discharge? Can you understand? What is mean by speed of the circuit? How yes, fast it can charge? How fast it can discharge? How quickly it will discharge? So it designs the speed of the circuit. This parasitic capacitor. In your analog circuit, you see analog circuit also you have the capacitor. Same capacitor. I have drawn here. What is the role of this parasitic capacitance? Here, uh, drops the rate. It won't drop. See, this parasitic capacitance will decide the bandwidth of an amplifier. This bandwidth. Okay. It will decide the bandwidth of an amplifier. In your ana analog, see, you have gain. Up to which point, up to which frequency your gain remains as constant. Which point it start to roll off. So it will decide the bandwidth of the circuit, the parasitic capacitor. Can you understand? So your MOSFET, let us take a MOSFET. This MOSFET, you can construct a MOSFET in a digital circuit or analog circuit or memory circuit. So your MOSFET, you will have the resistance and capacitances. In your analog in your digital circuit, it decides the speed of the circuit. In your memory circuit, it flips, it holds the value, it stores the energy. What is the role of the parasitic capacitances? It stores the value. You are, you are inverter, you see, this is your parasitic capacitor. But a transistor, input output capacitance are the parasitic this capacitor. It stores the values, either one or zero. Without this capacitor, you can't store the value. Okay, internal capacitor, we can say it is a parasitic capacitor. It stores the value. Okay. In memory, in a mass, it stores the value. In analog, what is the role of this capacitor? It decides the bandwidth circuit. Can you see sure. the importance of the MOSFET? By using this MOSFET, you can design a digital circuit. By using this MOSFET, you can design an analog circuit because in voltage transfer characteristic curve, the saturation region bandwidth is high in your MOSFET. That's why we can use MOSFET to design an analog amplifier. Can you understand? See, uh, even yes, though sir. there is a, if you compare to some other uh, technology, TFET and FinFET or uh, CNTFET, the noise margin is good, but it is not that much good when you compare with the CNTFET or FinFET. Noise margin is very good in your CNTFET or FinFET because it has a steep response. Okay, it has steep response. Because of this bandwidth, we can use to construct a digital circuit, analog circuit, memory circuit. Understand? Because of this bandwidth only, when it is flipped, it is possible to, this is nothing but a flipping the two inverter. When you flip, it is possible to get a regenerative latch which will hold the values. Can you understand? See, in your, if you use the FinFET, you can easily design a digital, but you can't design a memory or 
analog circuit if you use the mm. if you use the c and t fed we can't design a uh, memory or analog circuit if you use the t fed we can't design a memory or analog t fed uh, for a fin fed somewhat some reasonable is reasonable to have the bandwidth so we can design a memory we can use a analog circuit see here uh, we can control like this what is the important of mosfet why we are studying as of now mosfet we'll study some more time also the reason is we can use the mosfet to design a analog digital and memory memory so somebody is giving you the circuit what you have to do is first you plot the voltage transfer characteristic curve of that device and see whether it has this bandwidth if it has this bandwidth definitely you can use to design a analog and memory circuit understand if it doesn't have this bandwidth there is a steep response then that device can be used to design a digital circuit yes. Yes, yeah that's why right. yes, so sir. what happens many scientists are doing in abroad uh, as i told you in stanford you know, many people are doing a lot of research to bring up the new device to replace the mosfet why they want to replace the mosfet to satisfy the most law now it reaches the saturation point beyond this point we can't scale down we can't improve the performance so they want to introduce a new device okay but here if you see gallium arsenide is the perfect device to replace the mosfet the fabrication technology so far it is not mature to get the uh, to make the fabrication easy in a gallium assay technology understand maybe uh, you can also invent some new devices okay so thank yes, you sir thank you sir do you have any questions yes sir finfet uh, what is the expansion uh, for finfet sir because mosfet metal is semiconductor ah. and uh, newly they have finfet, finfet. Pin fit. Pin fit. Yes, sir. Let me type on. Yes, it is pin a new technology. Sir. You test many number of fit. Okay. Pin field effect. Yes, sir. Pin field effect transistor. The pin pin means what is the meaning for? It has many fins. For fins, a lot of areas. Not lot of areas. Many gate areas will be there. N number of many fins areas. will be there. Okay, that's okay. why it is called fit. Sir, I have only heard by CMOS like this. Sir, it is useful for now on. It is a by CMOS, by polar, by CMOS, by polar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By CMOS, uh, they are using the by CMOS. Uh, it is also good in designing the uh, uh, analog circuit. Analog circuit. Yes. Analog circuit. Analog. Uh, so, to some extent, we can use it in digital circuit. The thing is, see, you can't uh, you can't scale down the by CMOS circuit. Okay. Sir, uh, already I have uh, seen something ridiculously large scale integration like this. Sir. Ridiculously ultra ultra large scale integration after that ridiculously. Now uh, I have seen in the text the, the uh, that means Jaga another name for that uh, newly noted technique. Pardon? After uh, VLSI RLSI like this. Ridiculously large scale integration. VLSI. Beyond that. RLSA, sir. RLSA. Is it possible? I see UL say ultra, ultra large scale, large scale uh, integration. Ridiculously large scale integration, like that. The word that you have seen. Ridiculously. Uh, ridiculously means after that, there is no possible for integration. Yeah, yeah. Let's say, let's say it is not integration. You can't scale down the device size. Yeah, okay. Sir. So because of more.